Hello everyone, how are you? How's everything? I hope everything is going well with you and you're safe and sound with your families all around. So, I'm uh, today I'm going to uh, give you a quick review about what we had covered so far and where are the most important parts that you need to focus on to get ready for your final assessment so uh, as you all know we have posted all these lecture notes on Moodle so you do have access to all the lecture notes and now when I'm doing the review I'll try to refer to the respected lecture notes so to you can go and check them out for more detailed information so let's start with the lecture note 14 in which we started to talk about the Laplace transform so over here I need you to make sure that you understand the concept of the Laplace transform and what is the basics of the operation of this transform if you remember we went over the general formula how to go from time domain to the Laplace domain using this integration and we tried to apply it for a couple of simple functions like ut and you see that for example the Laplacian of ut ended up to be 1 over s or the Laplacian of delta t ended up to be 1 but at the same time, if you remember, I told you that you probably never need to use this formula as there is a table called Laplace table that gives us the Laplace transform of the most popular functions that we deal with them uh, instantly. So if you get the concept of the Laplace transform then applying actually conducting the transformation is not a big deal we'll just use this table that we call it the Laplace transform pairs table and Laplace transform of the most useful signals most common signals are mentioned here from delta t and ut and rt even when they are being shifted when they are being multiplied by e to the power of minus a t when they are being multiplied by a sine or by a cosine or a shifted sine or shifted cosine or combinations of sine and cosine so all of these possible functions that you all possible signals basically that you will deal with them in your systems the Laplace pair of them are present in this Laplace table and it's available everywhere in your exams it's going to be available at your work it's going to be available it's, it's like the, you will never find trouble finding the Laplace table so uh, from this lecture note this is what you need to remember and keep in mind then in the lecture note 15 we our objective was to develop your skills in applying the Laplace transform techniques okay so you here we have tried to uh, remind you of the Laplace pairs which were mentioned in the table but we tried to remind you of them and tell you about some of the properties here which are more useful for example the shifting property so when you shift a signal a function of t by t capital in Laplace domain the resultant function is multiplied by e to the power of minus t capital s and it's the other way around too if you multiply a time domain function by e to the power of minus a t in the plus domain it's being shifted it becomes f of s plus a so this property was called the time shift when you shift 
the time in the function this property was called the frequency shift where your s becomes s plus a here your t was becoming t minus t so this this shifting frequency shift and the time shift these two are a couple of m the most important properties of Laplace transform and we have solved some examples here and we have applied them and using them and also using the Euler formula we could find we could prove what is the Laplace transform of the sine of omega t and cosine of omega t although you could have found them in the table I told you that table is amazing you can find any uh, Laplace transform that you need in that table but here we showed you where some of those pairs are coming from and here we started to apply uh, these uh, techniques these properties in some examples and also we introduced you a new table here that we call it the properties Laplace properties table in this, the linearity property, the time shift property, the multiplication by t, multiplication by t to the power of n frequency shift, all of them are mentioned here. And it's uh, told how to deal with any of these scenarios. So these are pretty important to remember from lecture note 15. After that, going to lecture note 16, we started to talk about the inverse Laplace transform why because I had explained to you that Laplace works like a bus for us so you turn your signal from time domain to the signal to the Laplace domain over there in the Laplace domain you will solve your problem or you will analyze your circuit that will make your life much easier and you will find the output but this output is also in Laplace domain so you need to apply an inverse Laplace to take it back to the time domain so this part that you go from the time to the Laplace is like you're getting on the bus then this bus that you're solving your problem much more easily is like when you're riding the bus and this part that you have found your answer and you want to go back to your uh, time domain it's like you're getting off the bus so this is as important this getting off the bus is as important as getting on the bus because the bus is useless if you cannot get off that bus right so you have to learn the techniques how to apply the Laplace inverse so here we have started to tell you that okay technically it's not a big deal if the Laplacian of ut is 1 over s so we can imagine the Laplace inverse of 1 over s is ut so basically you can use the table okay you can use the table just what s makes things a bit more complicated is the cases that you get some fractions some fractions with different orders of polynomials in the numerator and in the denominator so you do not have uh, the answer to this type of function in the table in the frame table some simple functions are mentioned both in time domain and in the Laplace domain so what you have to do you have to try to simplify these complicated polynomial fractions how usually by applying the partial fraction technique that I think we practiced it a lot in this semester so you the in in a few sentences what you're gonna do you're gonna find the zero the poles of this fraction what are the poles the poles are the roots of the denominator then you're gonna decompose your fraction into some simple fractions that the denominator of each of these are gonna be a, a simple function of s with single pole so 
for example, this one that the denominator was s times s plus 2 will have uh, will can be decomposed into a, f a fraction with the de denominator of s and a fraction with the denominator of s plus 2. You can see it because if you want to turn go from the right hand side to the left hand side, you have to take a common denominator. So you have to multiply these two by each other, so you will end up getting this one. In this process of partial fraction, we do it the other way around. The basically the inverse of a common denominator. So do this partial fraction. The techniques we explained a lot about them. We said that, for example, this k is here because here the order of the denominator and the denominator is equal. So you will have a constant k that, of course, when you take it back to time domain, you're going to have some k delta t, right? This one, when you take it back to the time domain, it's going to be some a times ut. This one, when you take it back to the time domain, it's going to be uh, b e to the power of minus 2t ut, right? Because it's shifted, frequency shift. So all you had to find here was to find a and b. That we explained to you simple techniques like the, the covering method, or in which basically you are multiplying both sides by different poles one by one, and you will end up having a couple of equations, and you will find the unknowns, which in this case are a and b and k. And then you can simply take it from this simple function can be taken to the back to the time domain using the table because by the table you know what is the you have the Laplace pair t table so you know that what is the inverse of 1 over s what is the inverse of 1 over s plus 2 and 20 times that is going to be 20 times for example e to the power of minus 2 t u t so several examples are solved in this lecture so please go over them and make sure that you understood those examples and there is also a couple of examples including circuits which are actually pretty interesting too so please go over them and if you had any question get back to me of course they are they are pretty straightforward but then going to the lecture note 17 we continue talking about the inverse laplace and again we have explained this partial fraction in more details and to try to explain even more complicated cases here with distinct poles or no even if we with the the cases that you uh, do not have real poles, you have complex poles. So all these cases are being uh, analyzed here because sometimes you have you will end up having a denominator like this, this s squared plus four. So this case, this is if you want to find the poles of this one, s squared equals minus four. Your poles are going to be plus and minus two j. So it means you're not going to have a real pole to have a complex pole absolutely then when you have a complex pole you should know right off the bat that your answer is going to be either sine your final answer is going to be sine or cosine because you remember that the Laplace transform of the sine of omega t was omega over s square plus omega square and the Laplace transform of the cosine of omega t was s over s square plus omega square right Perfect. So we'll go over this lecture too again. There are some good examples here. Make sure that you can solve these examples yourself. And again, some uh, other circuit examples that I would encourage you to go over it and make sure that you can solve it by yourself. At the end of this lecture note, I started to tell you about the partial fraction because I have explained how do we deal with the differentiation in Laplace domain and differentiation in Laplace domain. Actually, I have told you several times that one of the reasons that we like Laplace 
is that we it help us get rid of the differential equations because differentiation in Laplace domain is simply multiplying by s. Just there is we the Laplacian of the derivative of f of t is s times f of s minus something we call it f zero negative. This f zero negative is the initial condition. It's the initial condition. This initial condition can be sim seen when we deal with the uh, capacitors and inductors. So when you go in lecture note 18, you will see that for the capacitors with initial, con initial condition, we can model them with a capacitor without initial condition parallel with a current source with the value of CV zero negative or for an inductor with in an initial condition IL zero negative we can model it with an inductor without initial condition parallel with the current source with the value of I zero over S at the same time depending on the circuit that we're dealing with we can model this capacitor with initial condition with a capacitor without initial condition series with a voltage source if it was easier for your circuit analysis you can model it this way the same for the inductor you can also model this one with uh, an inductor without initial condition series with a voltage source so the models are mentioned here and uh, uh, there is an example here in this lecture note 18 please go over it and you see that how easy it will become when you use these techniques to replace the capacitor and inductor with their um, initial condition circuit models so this is also a very important part of your uh, course so both from lecture note 17 and 18 make sure that you learned the initial conditions and also you learned how to deal with the differential equations in differential and integral equations both in Laplace domain so if you had like something like this which was a second second order differential equation right because you have one differentiation and one integration so it's a second order equation how can simplify it and get a signal get a simple equation in a Laplace domain and then you can solve a linear equation there so this is also an important thing that there are examples solved in lecture note 18 then we go to the lecture note 19 which is about the Z transform very simple at the same time very important we mentioned that this is like the counterpart for Laplace but for discrete signals so Z transform was very simple because the concept was just the Z transform of a function X of N was found this way X of Z is equal the sigma from minus infinity to infinity of x of n times z to the power of minus n so from n domain basically you will go to the z domain so this is it it might look a little bit weird because we we'll say okay oh wow, there is a big a big series going from minus infinity to infinity but yes it's series no need to worry about it you already learned in your calculus too how to deal with series right so this series the style of series like uh, like for example x of nz to the power of minus n especially when for example your function is like this imaginary x of n is a to the power of n u n then you wanna take the z transform of this function so of course the transform will be a to the sigma of a to the power of n u n z to the power of minus n so it's basically 
this UN, the role of this UN is to eliminate the part which is less than zero. So the sigma will be from zero to infinity. So you just need to figure out this series. And this series is converging only if this a z to the power of minus one is smaller than one, right? For this to be smaller than one, z has to be greater than a. And when it is converging, it will converge to this value, z over z minus a. If this condition is not met, it's not even converging, it's diverging, so we cannot find the answer, as simple as that. So that's why in the z transform, you need to find two things. You need to find the z transform, the x sub z, and also you need to find something called ROC. What is ROC? It's the region of convergence. In this case, the region of convergence is z greater than a. There are several examples solved in this uh, lecture note. Please go over them. It's, I told you it's very simple. It's very, very simple. And you will learn how to deal with the Z transform easily here. So make sure you will go over them. Then here I have explained something for you that how the Z transform of delta N is simply one. The transform of delta N minus one is simply Z minus one. Z transform of delta N plus one is simply Z. Knowing that, we can check here and we can again picture note 19 check it out and see it's very simple to prove that because delta n is only having value at one point right everywhere else is going to be zero the same here knowing that it's going to help you a lot when you do the inverse z transform because when you are doing the inverse z transform for example if you have a situation like this that your x of z is 4 z square plus 2 plus 3 z to the power of minus 1 you know that this 4z square is the z transform of delta n plus 2. This uh, constant is the z transform of delta n. z to the power of minus 1 is the z transform of delta n minus 1. And if you had s situations like this in the z inverse, you know that if this, if your the z func x of z has converged to 1, over 1 minus 1 over 4 z minus 1 for example probably your original function was something like this 1 over 4 to the power of n un again using the thing that I just showed you in the beginning of this uh, lecture note so please make sure that you go over lecture note 19 show the things that you need to know how to find the z transform of the functions and their region of convergence and how to find the inverse so which is super simple as i said there's nothing out of these things that i just told you the techniques that i just told you after that we actually went back to lecture note 11 which was about sampling and i had explained for you the sampling was a very simple thing and uh, we talked about it you already know what is it about and uh, we explained that how would it work and the best way is to multiply the signal by the impulse train uh, the, the train of impulses so call it impulse train sampling and we have explained that how would it work so there was a graph here in page in the slide number eight so it was showing that how would it work when you multiply it by this uh, s uh, train impulse train there is uh, the most important slide here is slide number 10. Make sure you understand it very well. Look, there's this flow chart here that's telling you what will happen to x of t. You multiply it by the pulses, it's the pulse train. So you will have xp of t. Then you will take it to the Fourier domain, to the frequency domain. It will become xp of j omega. So the this is the x, x of j omega xp of j omega will be a periodic thing here with the frequency of uh, omega s the sampling which is the sampling frequency and the magnet basically the uh, the width of this uh, x of j omega is omega m then after you will get this thing 
you can to recover your signal you can apply a filter here this filter this omega c the cutoff frequency of this filter has to be uh, bigger has to be between omega n and omega s minus omega m to make sure that it will pick only one of these cycles so you will recover your x of j omega and then you will take it back to the time domain you will have your recovered x of t this is a very simple thing that we just need you to make uh, sure that you understand this slide very well and there was something that the sampling frequency must be bigger than two times of the omega m if this is not the case you will have something called aliasing okay so this is very important to know so in the, uh, slide number 16 so aliasing is also an important concept so if you please go over this lecture note uh, number 11 you see it's not a big deal as i said make sure that you understood these a couple of points that i told you and if there was any question or anything that was not 100 percent clear just get back to me i will be more than happy to walk you through the material thank you very very much it was a pleasure to be with you and thank you for taking your time to watch this video have a beautiful day take care see you soon